The Lord has allowed me the privilege to listen to and pray with many respected global leaders all around the world. And many of them, these leaders, tell me that there are very troubling times ahead and that it's getting late and times are getting serious. You see, folks, we must discern the times we are living in, like the men of Issachar in 1 Chronicles 12, 32. The Lord said to me, where is the anguish and the tears? Where is the mourning and the fasting? Where is the agonizing over the ruin of our inner cities? I have shared this as I have spoken with our leaders within the halls of Congress and the White House and even within the United Nations. You see, in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah confesses the sins of himself and all the people when he hears of the ruin which drives him to his knees. When Nehemiah heard of this ruin, he didn't ask why, but rather he was broken by the news. But why did God share his anguished heart with Nehemiah? Because he was a man of prayer. I believe in destiny and that God can choose a man, but he can also abort a man just like that. As Nehemiah could have said no to the task he was being burdened with, and that he could have believed that God would have raised up somebody else to do the job. But no, he said to God, This is my burden, and therefore open your heart to me. You see, we can either walk away and go back to our passivity and say that I'm simply going to be an ordinary individual, or we can say this cannot go unchallenged, and our prayer life is birthed in this place of anguish, and God begins to share the pain of his heart with us. He will show you the condition of man in and around you, and then he will ask you a question. What is it to you? And then we must make a decision. If we're going to bear his burden and become an instrument of restoration, and if we're believing for someone else to do this work, then we are mistaken. As he is saying to us today, I've burdened your heart. I've opened up my anguish to you, and you can feel it and share it so that it will bring you to your knees because with no anguish or brokenness or prayer, nothing can be done. The walls could never have been rebuilt in the days of Nehemiah without that anguish. Anything we may try to do without this baptism of anguish will falter and fall, and it will not work. You see, when we begin to seek God's face and we allow him to melt and break us and we come into a communion with him that out of this experience of anguish, which is the birth of something, and out of this womb of what is ruin can come a birth of restoration. The servant who willingly takes on the mantle of God's pain is the only servant who has the authority and right to hold God to his covenant promises. But only those who've known his heart and in those times have allowed God to bring healing and has allowed God to go down deep in their souls and to say, Oh God, I can't do this on my own. I'm not going to live in this condition any longer. When we get desperate before God and we set ourselves to begin to seek him, then we can hold God to his covenant promises. When we allow God to lead us into this place beyond concern, beyond just fleeting emotion, and we say, God, I'm going to set my heart, then we can expect God to move on our behalf. There is going to be no renewal, no revival, no awakening until we are willing to let him once again break us. I pray that he breaks us again and takes us into his heart.